Cage match. <laughs> Today. Stinny D versus B Slice. Oh no. <laughs> Who's my Slice? B Slice is my rapper name. Yeah. Oh man. I feel your last name is Manly. I mean, like, there's a wrestler name in there somewhere. <laughs> well, yeah, that's my wrestler name. That's different. B Slice is my rapper name. Oh, good pair, fair. Anything with Manly and it, it's too obvious. <laughs> Terrible. All right. We're going to talk about your unit three project requirements. And then we're going to put you into your groups for your unit three projects. So uh, for unit three uh, projects, you will be building a MERM stack CRUD application. Uh, this will technically be a kind of uh, split application. You will have an API in the back end that services a React app in your front end, creating this Mern stack. So um, you will be working in groups for this project. Uh, the group work uh, will be a fun, fun time. Uh, this is when you are going to uh, get a lot of your stories that you're going to tell in interviews uh, past this course being done. Um, and you'll see here at the bottom of this, we'll talk about this a lot through this whole process is uh, we're talking about your ability to work in a team during this project is more important to us as your instructors than the project itself. Um, that's going to be a little bit of a shock for some of you. Uh, that might be a little weird, but that is indeed the case. We care more about how you work in the group, how you work in your groups, how you uh, contribute in a group, how you kind of work together with other people uh, during this project than the actual end product itself. Um, you're Realistically, most of you are going to leave this program and get jobs doing stuff in React. You're going to leave this program and uh, continue building React applications after the course is over. Uh, what we want you to get uh, kind of, uh, what the experience we want you to leave here with is the, uh, is that great like group story that you're going to be able to tell an interviewer about how you've worked on a team doing a coding project. Uh, that is going to be a kind of, it'll be something that comes up over and over and over as you're interviewing. You're going to lean upon this group experience to be able to share with your interviewer what you, uh, what your role is like on a team and how you contribute on a team and so on and so forth. So again, how you work in your team and how you work as a group is more important to us than the actual end product of this application. The application is really just kind of there to, uh, you know, give you something to do over the next week. <laughs> what, what, when you hear that, what do you think you should shoot for as far as your project requirements? Should you go ham or should you keep things simple? Simple. Sample, yeah, don't go shooting the moon on this one. Like, let's keep things nice and simple. And then if you get all your features implemented and you have the minimum base requirements done, then you can get fancy and do all the other stuff. I think this is why our unit two projects were so successful is because you all did a really good job keeping things reasonable as far as your requirements went and then went above and beyond to fix them. Don't look at crazy third-party APIs until you've got a basic flow for your app down. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on here. I'll also say while we're talking about it, you might think that because you're on a group, you can accomplish more in this project week. That is absolutely 100% not true whatsoever. Not at all. Like not even for a second. You will not get more done in this project week than you got done in a week two project week. I can guarantee it right now. If you're thinking, oh, I have like three other really cool people and they're going to be able to like do this and do that. And we're going to like put all of our brains together. And we're going to build something really, really cool. Ah, slow down. Start simple with these applications and with your ideas. And then after you've hit that MVP and it's like Wednesday and you're looking for something to do, then you can think about, okay, cool. What can we do to turn this application up to 11? But 
until that point, until you've hit MVP, this project needs to be simple and you need to plan to have a very, very simple project. Again, just like in unit two, the number one thing that brings a group down is shooting for the moon. You want to build a simple application that functions and is really, really polished. That should be your goal going into this week. As Ben is drawing, the more people you have, the less work you will actually get done. Uh, this, so this iPad's fun. I I can tell you are enjoying the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So you're um, again, whenever you're interviewing, this project is really about giving you a story to tell in an interview um, where you're going to be able to talk about how you worked on a team. So make sure that you are being a good contributor on this team so that whenever other people in your group are sharing stories about how their big unit group unit project went, that they're not being like, yeah, there was someone in my group and they were like not that great and they made the group kind of devolve. Don't be the person that someone else tells about in a interview. Uh, we've, I've kind of talked about as we've been building Hoot out, um, the importance of, you know, like you now have a few techniques under your belt about how to go about doing things. You know about dot then syntax for promises. You know about async await for promises. And you have a familiarity with both of these because we have done both at this point. So whenever you are uh, kind of coming together as a group, one of the things that you need to decide on is how are we going to make the code in this application look consistent from component to component, from front end to back end, all of that. How are we going to make it look like one team developed this application rather than a bunch of people randomly making decisions because of some made up reason? So you're going to, as Ben highlighted earlier, need to tackle these problems and form a consensus. And you'll probably need to end up compromising because you're going to have some opinions that are going to be different among your group. Um, cool. So, as Ben is writing, teamwork makes the dream work. So, uh, let's talk about what we're actually doing for this project. Uh, your uh, due dates for this are going to be a Trello board due uh, this Friday. This is a little, hold on, hold on one second. I need to adjust this real quick. We had a last minute change, giving you a little bit more time to plan, which is great. Uh, so for uh, your Trello board, that should be 240. Nope, that's right. Sorry. Uh, so this Trello board, again, needs to be public as Ben is highlighting over here. And this uh, Trello board, uh, along with a pitch deck presentation, uh, is going to happen on uh, Friday, tomorrow, uh, 3.45 p.m. on the East Coast and 12.45 p.m. on the West Coast. Hey, David, I got a question. Uh, are, are Trello boards supposed to be uh, public? Uh, yes, they are, so that we are able to actually see them and we can actually, you know, give you feedback on them before you start your project. It's very, very helpful uh, if we don't have to chase down uh, you whenever you're working on that. Also, probably pretty important so that your group members can also see what is going on on this Trello board, too. Uh, so, yes, for public Trello board. Uh, if your group members can't see it, we can't see it. There's, there's how you check that. Yes. Cool. Um, Trello board, I'm not going to dive too much into because you've actually done all of this before in unit two. Uh, you're going to have user stories in uh, your Trello board. Uh, you're going to have wireframes in your Trello board, and you're going to have an ERD in your Trello board, just like we did in unit two. I will say a lot of teams uh, do really, really good work if they collaborate on this Trello board together and stay current with it throughout project week. So uh, as you're going through and kind of uh, figuring out roles among your team, who's going to do what, uh, it is 
probably likely that you will decide that someone needs to own the planning process and someone needs to be able to uh, kind of know what is happening among the group at any given point in time. Uh, that would be a good person to manage this Trello board and keep it up to date and make sure, hey, X person is working on this right now, Y person is working on this other thing, so on and so forth. Uh, so Trello board. Number one thing, uh, again, do tomorrow at the same time as your pitch deck presentation, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Uh, Manny, you have a question. Is it one, it's it's one Trello board per group, right? One Trello board per group, correct, yes. You will submit one link to us, uh, whatever one person in this group submits this link, it will count for everyone. I don't need separate turn-ins from every single person in the group on Clippy. Great question. Um, any questions about the Trello board? Fantastic. All right. So, um, you can see a great example, uh, Trello board here. Uh, so possibly there we go. Uh, so in here we can see this board is set to public. This is what you should see whenever you turn in this Trello board. Uh, and then we have some user stories for an icebox or our backlog, our MVP user stories, what we're currently working on, and then any completed user stories that we had. Again, as you're going through and doing things in your team, it's going to be really beneficial to you to make sure that you're probably keeping up with this Trello board. You might not have done that during your unit two project, but now that you're working on a team, it's going to help a ton knowing what everyone is doing. You can implement a lot of additional tracking features on these different cards to attach uh, a, a given person to a different task, so on and so forth. Uh, this is a great thing to be able to uh, go into your standups and stand downs with next week as well so that you understand kind of where your app lies at a given point in time. What are we currently working on? What do we still have to do to get to MVP? Uh, and what have we completed today? As Ben pointed out, move cards as you start and uh, complete items. So again, as you have an MVP user story that is currently being worked on, move this card over to your current work. And then, after that work is complete, move that card over to your completed user stories. It also says to tag group members in cards too. Yay, great idea. That way everyone knows what their assigned tasks are. So, Trello board. Next, uh, pitch decks. Uh, those will occur at the same time that your Trello board is going to be due. We'll have a order uh, sent out for that tomorrow. Uh, so we are going to uh, actually make it so that you don't have to talk as long during this presentation. We're reducing this to just five minutes. So all we need to know from this pitch deck presentation is what your application is, and a team name. Uh, you're going to need to come up with a team name. Uh, we're going to need uh, what your team members are doing. What roles and responsibilities does a given person have during the week? Uh, you're going to make a, um, there's a list of uh, team roles below that will help you uh, throughout this process. And also, the problem that you're going to solve with this application. This is an incredibly broad prompt, but essentially your applications should be, I have a problem that I want to solve. That should be the idea behind these applications for this unit. It's a really easy thing to rally people around. It's a, going to make sure that you have some kind of framework to work within as you're kind of doing your uh, ideation. And yes, no shen shenanigans. We want to keep these to five minutes. Uh, so that's going to make sure that we, you know, you are like planning on the side to do anything other than planning. Focus on your planning for this presentation. Uh, your planning process informs what your presentation is going to be. Um, cool. So 
Uh, ba, 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 ba. Next, at the end of the day, hello, Ben. Uh, at the end of the, the, the day tomorrow. Uh, so that's going to be end of the day, West Coast, 8 p.m. for uh, uh, East Coast, 5 p.m. West Coast. Uh, you're going to have a uh, front end and back end GitHub submission due. Ben wants me to open the thing on potential team roles, but I kind of want to wait until it's down here, I think. This Fine. is down here, right? Yeah, it's probably down there too. Uh, actually, I don't think it is. We could talk about it now. Why not? I love it. Uh, so, See, this is me roles. looking out for all of you. Good job, Ben. So, team roles. Uh, you want to talk about team roles, Ben, since you're so passionate about them? I would love to. So here's how you, be, here's how you stay effective when you're working on this stuff. Um, everyone should be responsible for at least one, maybe two of these things. You don't necessarily have to fulfill all these roles, but it's going to help you if you have one person managing a bunch of these different processes. So realistically, one person is going to be in charge of doing a group stand up and stand down at the start and end of every day. Hey, what do we need to accomplish today? What? How are we going to get that done? Uh, Fred, I need you working on this. Bobby, I need you working on this. Susie, you're going to be working on this. Is that right? They're not necessarily delegating tasks. They're just checking in to see what everybody's going to be working on to make sure that you're A, you have goals to work on and things to do, and B, that you're not going to be working in overlapping files because then you can have merge conflicts and nobody likes merge conflicts. Um, this person isn't necessarily like the boss of the group, but they're the one that keeps the group on task to make sure that everybody's got something to do and that everybody's just part of the process. Ideally, this person would be the person that manages Trello because this kind of goes hand in hand with that. So this person should probably do Trello, right? Um, your GitHub manager or your Git commander, I mean, that's, we, we know that, we've talked about that already. Um, documenter, person in charge of the readme, designer, can you have multiple people do styling? Sure. Is it better to have one person do consistent styling for the entire app? Probably. Roll with it, right? Um, database manager. This is literally the person that sets up your database connection and uh, is in charge of making sure that you get all the backend models set up properly. Um, again, can you have everybody contribute on this process? Yes. Is it better to just have one person write all that code? Yes. Um, so that can be one person. Uh, API manager. If you're doing anything with APIs, which again, you shouldn't unless you are really, really comfortable with where you're at. Um, but that would be the person in charge of all of that stuff. Um, there are other roles that you could fill that aren't necessarily on here. Um, you know, if you watch some of the pitch decks previously, which by the way, you should not be comparing yourselves to because we are giving you significantly less time to get pitch decks ready than we have for students in the past, um, which is why we've lowered the requirements for the pitch decks. Um, we wanted to give you all more solo time during the unit. So you, we make sure that everybody actually learns stuff instead of relying on teammates to do it. So that's kind of why we've made these decisions and why we've shortened the, the length of the amount of time we're giving you to, to get these project planning materials done. But realistically, one person's going to write all your models. One person's going to come up with, um, you know, one person will be in charge of writing the readme. All of these different roles are things that you should have uh, kind of assigned and thought out ahead of time. Um, sometimes it's nice to have somebody that is like in charge of keeping group spirit up. Like that can be a tough thing to do. Like just have somebody get like a group. I don't want to say a cheerleader, but like somebody who's like, yeah, yeah, let's, let's get it done today, you know, and just be, you know, Mr. Or Mrs. Positivity. Um, that can go a long way in, in group work like this. One of the other challenges that y'all are going to have to work through, and I'm really excited to see how you deal with it is we've tried to balance most of the groups so that you have a couple of people from East Coast and a couple of people from West Coast in them. So you're going to have to think about when you're working. And we're going to talk about when you're required to be on Zoom, but you're going to have to plan out when you're going to be online and who's going to work on what and how you're going to communicate and how you're going to manage that. And it's going to be a challenge for all of you. And it's going to be something for you to talk about during those job interviews. So um, those team roles are not requirements, but they will they are things that will help you along the way. Smiley face. Absolutely. Um, so I I will note, like, the only real role that is here that you must fulfill is your GitHub manager. 
Um, you're, someone is going to have to manage your GitHub. Uh, who should that be? That should be the person that is going to be the most available on your team. Uh, the person that has the least amount of stuff going on outside of class, the person who can be available to uh, kind of bring in pull requests and uh, audit those and bring them into your main code base. Uh, a lot of your work is going to hinge on your Git commander uh, or your GitHub manager doing their actual work throughout the week, uh, making sure that everyone's code is being added to the code base as that code is being worked on. Uh, that That is like your, your kind of, your GitHub manager is your hub person that is going to uh, have their hands in everyone's sauce all uh, throughout the project week. So, uh, but again, the rest of these, you don't necessarily need to formally fulfill, uh, but again, these are some kind of broad strokes of where you could go. All right, so uh, from there, uh, at the end of the day uh, for West Coast, uh, we are expecting a submission uh, for your front end application, your React app, and your back end application, your API. Uh, and this will be submitted by your Git commander. Uh, they are going to turn in a public GitHub repo containing your front end code and a public GitHub repo containing the back end code. These will be two separate deliverables in Clippy. Again, only the Git commander needs to turn this in. Uh, again, just like always, uh, your GitHub repo should be appropriately named. Do not name your GitHub repo something like Unit 3 project front end, or GA project front end, or Mernstack project front end. Those are not appropriate names. Your name for this repo should describe your project. If you are building a duck collector application, then cool, very good. You have a duck collector front end repo. Uh, if you're building an application called Shelf, you might have a repo called shelf front end. Same thing again for your back end. These should be named relatively the same thing. Here we have duck collector front end and duck collector back end here. These should correspond to one another. One's just a back end and the other one's your front end. Um, your uh Backend repo, and this we'll talk about this here in a moment. Uh, the backend for this should contain a README file with just a link that points to the front end repo for more details on the project. We're not doing two readmes for this. You're going to have one central README on the front end side of this. All right. Um, that is this week. Those are your, what, uh, kind of three deliverables and then a presentation that are going to happen before the end of tomorrow. What, one thing I want to say Next on this, week. like we've given some leeway to people on getting this shit knocked out in the past. That's not going to happen tomorrow. You need to get this turned in. This has to be done tomorrow on time. If you're going to come short on that deadline or go long on that deadline, you need to be communicating with us so we can help you get there. Um, we're not going to be screwing around on uh, Slack all weekend, like looking at people who turn shit in late. Like, this is it. This is time to buckle down. It's teamwork time. It's group work time. You have to work with your group to meet deadlines and not like drag your feet. So please get your, your stuff turned in on time. Okay. It's time to do stuff and, you know, hit deadlines. Got to get it done. No excuses. Love it. All right. So uh, next week, there is a deployment link due. This is, again, very, very similar to Unit 2. Uh, this will be due at the end of the day uh, for West Coast, uh, so uh, 8 p.m. East Coast. Uh, again, that will just be the work that you have completed up to this point. Again, just like in previous projects, you still have time to continue work on your project after that point. This is just the initial deployment link that you are giving us with the work you have completed up to this point. Then you'll have a presentation next Friday with your group uh, where you will have 15 minutes to present uh, your project. You're going to introduce it, 
you'll demonstrate the project and then uh, every member on your team is going to share the experience of working in a group. Uh, so we're going to kind of lean a little bit more into, you know, what did you get out of this experience? Because we want you reflecting on these things again, so that you have good stories to go into job interviews with about how you work on a team. We want you to reflect on these things now before you uh, before you actually continue on with uh, your with the rest of uh, your with the rest of the course. Ben, your drawing is very, very distracting, but it's fine. Uh, this should be three. Thank you for pointing that out, Ben. I appreciate it. All right. So uh, again, all of the group members must participate in the presentation. You'll have 15 minutes for your presentation and a short Q&A may follow, just like previous units. Um, again, while you are uh, going through this, you're free to structure your project however you wish. Uh, this would be a good time if you want to throw in a few shenanigans into you know, your presentation and have a little bit of fun with this. This is a good time to do it. Uh, so... This is a great place where you're able to kind of knock it out of the park and finish your uh, project week strong with that presentation. You have a lot of creative resources around you that can pitch and help with that. So take advantage of that. We've seen you do all do fantastic projects in, or fantastic presentations in the past. I'm sure that, that trend will continue for this unit. So good. Such presentations. Such good presentations. Keep that up. Yeah. Yeah. You want me to talk right, about tech so, requirements so you can take a break? Sure, why not? Cool. I mean, I, if I'm not allowed to draw, I have to do something or else I'm going to get antsy over here. So do it. your project must use React to compose a front-end application. I don't know how you wouldn't do that. We're all using React, using the template. Um, communicate with a men's stack backend, backend application via Ajax. It's using fetch to talk to the backend. You're going to do that. Uh, your routes for your Ajax call should be properly namespaced and follow best, uh, best practices where applicable. Okay. What's best practices? What does that mean? Two words. The chart. The chart. Yes. Use the chart where applicable, please. That's why it's there. Okay. Uh, at least one data entity per teammate in addition to the user and profile models unless waived. We'll talk about what gets, lets you waive those here in a little bit. Uh, at least one entity should have a relationship with the profile model. Okay, so this is going to be the same as your unit two projects, but for every person, you add a model. So if you have three people in your group, you need user, profile, and at least three other data entities. A data entity could be a relate uh, something that's embedded within a resource. For example, comments. If you have comments embedded within a whatever schema, and you have a comment schema that's embedded within that, that counts as a resource. So you need at least three, if you have three person group, four, if you have a four person group. Um, you have to have somewhere in your application, full CRUD. It doesn't necessarily all need to be one resource, but you have to have at least one instance of create, read, update, and delete. Um, you can have a functionality that creates and updates a post and satisfy delete by implementing the ability to delete comments if you want. Um, that would count. You have to have JWT token-based auth. I don't know how you would get through this without that because it's built into the template. So you have to do that. You have to implement authorization by restricting create, update, delete data functionality to authenticated users. I'm going to say that again because I think that was one of the biggest things we missed in unit two. Okay, You have to implement authorization by restricting create, update, delete data functionality to authenticated users. If someone is logged into your app, they should not, or unless someone is logged into your app, they should not be able to create, update, or delete data resources unless you have a really good reason why. And if you want to sell it to us, then that's fine. Talk it, talk to us about it. If you if you feel like you want that ability for some reason in your app, um, if it makes sense, we'll let you do it. But you have to run that bias first. Also, navigation should respond to the login status of the user. Okay, if you log into your app, it should say. Look, it should look different than if you're not locked into your app. Again, that's built into the template, so that shouldn't be very difficult for you. Um, you should ensure that editing. Again, this is another one that we had had a bunch of people have to resubmit stuff on. 
ensure that editing and deletion of data can only be done by the user that created that data. Again, unless it makes sense to have that elsewhere. Realistically, if I create a post, someone else shouldn't be able to delete my post unless you have a good reason to do that. Maybe somebody, you know, you have a post and there are a bunch of comments on it and you give the owner of the post the ability to delete comments as well as the user that made the comment. That I would be cool with. But if I am user C and user A made a post and user B made a comment, user C should not be able to delete user B's comment. That doesn't make any sense and should not be allowed in your application. Um, your, oh my God, this is such a big one. This is, I will, we're going to pitch a fit if you don't do this, okay? Front-end application cannot have, cannot have any secret keys in it, okay? We've talked about this. I made a big stink about this in both cohorts, and you really, really need to pay attention to this. You cannot have secret keys that are accessed in the front end because they're not actually being secured, okay? Anything that requires a key needs to be done from the back end. So if you need to see how to protect an API call using a key from the back end, go check out the YouTube video. There are plenty of examples of how to do that, protected API calls. If you look in our, in our YouTube channel, we'll show you exactly how to do that, okay? It's not very difficult. It just requires a little bit of extra work. You cannot create calls from the front end using an API key. It's not secure. You will not get hired. It's just going to be a bad time. Please don't do that, okay? It should look and feel similar to apps that we use on a daily basis. Consistent and polished user interface and offer a positive user experience, including accessibility features. This, again, there were a couple people that kind of dropped the ball on this one last project. What does this mean, right? It should look reasonable. If you have a user that is uh, doesn't own a resource, you shouldn't display a delete button there. That doesn't make sense. A user should only see a delete button if they're actually going to be able to delete something. This is the kind of stuff that we talk about when, uh, when we talk about this polished UI, right? Um, what else? Favicon across across all the pages. Uh, proper indentation. Y'all knocked the ball out of the park with indentation last time, so kick-ass job on that. Uh, be coded using variable names that make sense and follow the conventions that we've demonstrated in lecture. Uh, and then code choices and style must be consistent across the project. If you're going to use async await, use async await for all of the places that you are using async await. For example, on the front end, okay? We haven't done any dot then on the front end. You should not have in your use effect, some use effects have a dot then and some of them have an async await. Don't do that, stay consistent. If you wanna use async await on the front end and dot then on the back end, do it. But don't mix and match things unless you're gonna be, uh, well, at all, don't mix and match things, stay consistent. Cool. Optionally, your uh, project may consume data from a third party API. Unless you are locked down with a project idea, we're not going to approve APIs. So you're going to have to show us if you want to use an API, I'm going to see, I need to see whether you have test data. So I want to show that you can get a, uh, get me test data in Postman. Come on, undo. I want test data in Postman. Uh, I want to show that you know how to do uh, protected API calls if there's a key. And I want to see a polished project idea before we approve any APIs, because we don't want you spending all weekend or all week next week working on API stuff and not really contributing to the project, uh, which is something that we've seen in the past. Okay. Um, you may also implement if I extra- could hop in, Ben. Please. Sorry. Uh, this is one of those things that is one of the downfalls of a unit three project typically is trying to implement a third party API. Um, it is possible. You can do it. I really, really highly recommend that you not. Um, it is going to slow you down massively. You're more than likely going to end up with a project that does not look as good as someone that did not consume a third party API. Breach. Um, implement additional functionality if the user is an admin. Not that hard to implement that feature. It's kind of cool. Um, something that's fun. If your app has a reasonable reason to do that, then go for it. If not, then don't. 
uh, implementation of a highly dynamic UI or component library, such as MUI. Um, if you don't know what MUI is, you probably shouldn't use MUI. But if you are interested in learning fun new frameworks uh, to throw onto, uh, or component libraries rather, uh, that you can throw on top of React and you feel comfortable with styling if shit hits the fan and you can't use it, then try it out. Um, some of our IAs are very, very skilled and use these things all the time and can give you all the best advice on them. Uh, or other instructor approved complexity and or features. Um, if you're going to go outside of the box on this and do something wacky, just make sure you run it by us first. It's not because we're trying to babysit you. It's because we want you to make projects that look good as portfolio, portfolio pieces um, and not spend a week and end up with trash because you struggled on implementing some wacky feature that you shouldn't really have tried to do in a week, um, like socket IO. Don't implement web sockets unless you've talked to us first. Um, ideally, you wouldn't do that at all because it's a, a lot to handle in a week. Um, but yeah, talk to us about that. Your app may not, may not, may not, absolutely cannot consume any API by Google. Okay, And the reason for this is many, there, there are many, most of which is it's going to require Google OAuth to log in. And this is not a Google OAuth project. This is a JWT auth project. Um, the other reason is that a lot of their apps or APIs like Google Maps is actually going to require you to put a credit card down. And it's going to also require that you put a key in the front end to use it effectively. And obviously that is a bad idea because now you've got a key in the front end, which we've already told you not to do, and a credit card, which is not going to match well because now you've exposed the key and there's a credit card linked to that key. Just don't do it. If you have questions on that and you want more specific answers, let me know, but just don't do it. Also, Pin, your picture is cracking me up right now because you're right beneath my face on Zoom and it looks like the Terminator is typing on a keyboard. Oh, there it goes. There, aha, yeah, cool, good times. Okay, David, you're up. Cool. So uh, as your uh, necessary deliverables for completing this project, uh, you should deliver a functioning decoupled MERN stack application that meets or exceeds the above technical requirements built by you and your team and hosted on the internet. Uh, decoupled uh, is the applications that we've been building this entire unit. Well, the entire back half of this unit where we have an API and a back end running in its own application and then a, a React app in the front end that is running its own thing. We have two separate applications. They are decoupled from one another. Uh, that is your, uh, that's the main thing from this. Uh, we will be deploying the front end on Netlify or recommending that you deploy the front end on Netlify and recommending that you deploy the back end on fly.io. Um, you can deploy your application elsewhere. I will not troubleshoot that. Uh, that is on you entirely. And I'm going to highly recommend that you not deviate from Netlify and fly. Uh, make sure whenever you're starting your project uh, that your Git commander has removed uh, Ben and I's uh, contributions on the auth template repos that you will be using for this project. Uh, that should be the very first thing that your Git commander does whenever they clone this these templates down initially. Um, you should have frequent commits on both the front end and the back end repos uh, from the beginning of the project through the date of completion. I, uh, I will you should mention just real, real quick. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, you're good. This is in the instructions. So if you're following the instructions in the template, this is not something you need to worry about. It's the rm minus rf dot git, that's that does this. So if you're following the instructions in the template, you won't need to worry about this one because you'll have done it already. Hundred percent. All right. Uh, next, uh, make sure that everyone in the group has frequent commits. Uh, this is going to be how you kind of prove to us that you have contributed to your team during this week. Uh, if any kind of questions around that arise, that is going to be your like golden ticket out of that like uncomfortable conversation. Um, the, the, how many? Great question, Ben Pad. Um, you should, at the end of this project, have probably at least, I would say around 300 commits on this project. 
uh, the a, a good uh, amount would again probably hover around 300 200 and eh, that's kind of on the low end but passable for sure uh especially if you only have three people on your team uh so you're going to have a substantial number of commits on this project more than you've ever had on any project before uh and that's also going to come from uh whenever you actually bring in a pull request into a project that counts as a commit uh, so your Git commander will have a lot more commits than everyone else on this project. That is 100% normal and 100% expected. Um, cool. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Uh, there is something that we haven't really talked a ton about, but pair programming is a fantastic way to go about these projects. And that pair programming is going to make it so that you are able to pair with someone else and get with them and bang out a piece of functionality in this application together. Uh, so that pair programming, uh, you and one other team member, or maybe your entire team working in a breakout room with one person driving and everyone else kind of contributing to the project all at once, uh, working on one kind of shared space. Uh, that is a really, really good way to tackle really complex features. It's a really good way to, uh, you know, if you have anyone fall behind during your project week, it's a really good way to catch that person up and make sure that everyone is kind of contributing equally to this project. Uh, so that is going to be something that you will frequently do. Uh, you could build an entire project like that. If that is what you do, that's 100% valid, and we super encourage that. But I will say make sure that you swap out who is driving through that process, who is actually making the commits. So again, it, it looks like everyone is contributing equally to this project instead of like one person driving the entire time. So only they are getting commits. So um, again, that's kind of pair programming or mob programming as it were, uh, a fantastic uh, kind of work method that you can use as you're going through uh, your project week. Um, as you're going through this project, your commit messages should be made in the present tense and they should also be meaningful. Your commit messages should describe what happened in that commit. Um, you should have both the front end and the back end applications present on every single team member's GitHub. Everyone will have a copy of this project at the end of it that they can own as uh, they go and do this kind of job hub process. You don't want to rely on your GitHub manager to own the only copy of the code that is uh, the final version. You want to make sure everyone on the team has that final version of your code. Uh, as we talked about earlier, there's going to be a readme file in your backend repo that just holds a link that points at your front end GitHub. That's all it's going to do. Your front end repo is going to hold your actual readme that has all the same things that we've kind of talked about before for a uh, unit project. The only addition you might make to this is going to be contributors. Uh, so this will be a section that you're going to add to a readme. You're just going to have a link off to each GitHub members uh, or each uh, member's GitHub profile. Everything else here is very similar to what we've done before though. Again, with your README, don't underestimate the value of a well-written and well-crafted README that is free of grammatical errors. Your README is going to introduce your project to prospective employers. It's really important that it looks good and that it feels good and that it reads well. Um, cool. Those are the necessary deliverables. Again, this is all the stuff that we are going to be looking at uh, whenever we are grading these actual uh, projects. Again, uh, everything that we've talked about in here is going to be on your, here it is, your unit three code review PDF.
which looks like this. Everything that we've talked about here as far as planning requirements, presentation requirements, your front end and back end readme requirements, and the technical requirements, and finally the deliverables, all of that stuff is here. As you're going through your project week, you should be collaborating with your team on filling this out so that you know where you are in relation to MVP. All right. Um, ben, you want to give some notes and guidance? Uh, yes, I'd love to do that. Um, the These projects are not... The engineering is going to be a little bit different this time. Okay. And we want everyone to be, try to become more self sufficient. Uh, and to do that, we want you to try to source the answers to problems from your group before you post in engineering. We still want you to post in engineering, but you really need to talk to your group members before that and try to be more self sufficient when you're trying to figure this stuff out. Unit four, we're going to wean you off even further. And we're going to be, really, really encouraging you to get out there, explore the documentation, Google things on your own. Because at the end of the course, you're not going to have the instructors to fall back on anymore. When you're out there learning new technologies and practicing the things that you've done, you're not going to be able to just message us and say, how do I fix this? It broke, right? You'll still be able to use engineering for a while, but realistically, those are things that you should be able to solve on your own as developers, because that's what you're going to have to do in the real world. You're going to have to communicate with other people and you're going to have to work with the, you know, the people that you're working with in order to try to get those things solved. So work with your teammates before you post in engineering. Um, make sure that you have explained, and this is why this is in bold red text here, uh, explain what your team has done to solve, to try and solve the issue in engineering in those posts. Okay. Um, there's the GitHub group workflow. You saw that already. There's a nice little thing there with understanding GitHub flow. Got diagrams. It's really pretty. That's that's really it. I think y'all are going to do well. I think the thing that you need to do in order to be most successful in this project is come up with some working agreements between you and your teammates. Um, you know, this is something that I usually scoff at when we do like team meetings with new people and new teams. It's like, what are the things that we value in a team? And like, it's, it sounds like bullshit, like HR garbage, but really the reason you do stuff like that is so that you understand how the people in your team think and what is going to drive them and what is going to piss them off, right? If if you're like, uh, you know, if, if you're one of those people that like is infuriated when people show up late to a meeting and you don't tell people, hey, like, if you don't say that you're going to be late to a meeting, like just, just let me know if you're going to be late. That way I'm not sitting there in a, a room waiting for a meeting to start for 10 minutes. Like if you're going to be late, just let me know. If that stuff like that annoys you, tell your group about that ahead of time. Walk, walk through what you need to successfully be a team member and then listen to what other people have to say about what they need out of you as a successful team member. Just do a little 10 minute talk with your teammates about stuff like that before you start working. I'm not saying you need to write down a list of things, but it can help to be able to discuss like, uh, you know, what, like just have a working agreement and things that you talk about ahead of time. Uh, I can't even believe I'm suggesting that because I always scoff at that when we do those in those meetings. But realistically, I think it's a good thing to have. Um, make sure that you're res respectful too of other people's opinions and, and uh, you know, the way that they want to do things. Just because you've been doing something for your whole coding career, which has been, what, a couple months, like doesn't necessarily mean it's the only way to do something. You need to be open to ideas, um, you know, flexible to change. Compromise and communication is all about what this project is for. Just like we mentioned ahead of time uh, or at the beginning of this little walkthrough, this project is not about the final product, right? It's going to be a final product. It's going to be a portfolio piece, whatever. It, but this is about the story that you are going to be able to tell about working in a team. And it's uh, all of you are going to have vastly different stories. And we're going to hear all about these on presentation day. And, um, you know, if you are in a group that you just struggle the whole time with communication stuff, you're going to explain that to other people in your, in your interview. And they're going to ask you, well, what would you do to, uh, you know, overcome that challenge in the future? And it's something you should be thinking about now rather than then. So talk to your teammates. If they they do something that pisses you off, say something to them. You know, be let's we'll be adults um, and communicate when you have a problem. Um, 
that being said, if something catastrophic happens in your group and you need to talk to the instructors, like just let us know. Groups are flexible. Uh, if we need to adjust things, we will. We want everyone to have a good experience, but that's going to start with communication. So communicate with your teammates, communicate with your instructors, and most importantly, have some fun. These projects are all better when you have fun building them. So do that. 100%. Uh, so, uh, I've been hit on everything that I was wanting to say there, but, um, I will say just to add on to what he said here, this is, if you're posting in engineering and you haven't talked with your team yet about the issue that you're having, you're working in your team incorrectly. Your first resource always during this project week should be your team. It should not be the internet. It should not be like Google or anything else. Talk with your team about what is going on with your project. That's the whole point of all of this. Uh, be open to collaborating with your team members. They're your team members. You are all in the project together. Uh, communication is a must. You have got to stay in contact with one another. You've got to let one another know what is going on with your project. And if something is, if a feature is falling behind and something that you've been assigned is not materializing, let people know sooner rather than later. Uh, it's super, super important to get help very, very quickly on these projects because time can spiral away from you super fast. You don't want to be someone who is, you know, given a task by your scrum manager on Monday morning and now it's Wednesday night and you haven't built that feature out yet. Not great. Not a good look for you. You want to make sure that, you know, if you're working on something for more than a couple hours, you're running up against walls with it loop in your team that's what they're there for that's why they exist <laughs> so um beyond that uh all of your project feedback will be delivered in the same way that it has been in the previous two units i'm not going to really dive into that here uh but it is all written here just for your evaluation again this will all work exactly how it worked in unit one and in unit two uh, uh you you're gonna will get much more feedback than you did in unit two. So there, with the, these are group projects. We have a lot more time to spend on them because there are a quarter of them. You're going to get much more detailed feedback on the unit three code reviews, kind of like you did in unit one. They will be a little bit different than unit two. The format's the same, but you're going to get more feedback on them. Yep. All right. Um, we've really talked about uh, all of this quite a bit, but as you're getting started, make sure you're not getting caught up and adding to me cool, fun features into this application. Uh, again, if you're, you know, if you're kind of struggling with how uh, you're dealing with React so far, this is not the time to just continue adding more stress on top of that. This is a fantastic time to do a little bit of a reset and be like, okay, cool. Let's learn some React fundamentals as I'm going through this project week. Uh, that is kind of where you should be, uh, kind of transparent with your team about how you're feeling about where React is for you at a given point. Uh, if you're not feeling too strong about this content, your team should know about that, uh, so that they can support you effectively. Uh, that's going to be really, really important going into this project week. Um, you probably ran into this as you were doing your GitHub workflow work, but communication is key as you're working on your actual code. Uh, whenever you are uh, working in your groups, make sure that you're not just all working in the same file at the same time. That's going to lead to merge conflicts. You need to make sure that you're communicating with your team members and saying like, hey, I'm working an app. No one work an app until I'm done with this feature. And then I will submit a pull request and we're all free reign on app again. Uh, so keep that those lines of communication open. Be available on Slack uh, to people throughout the day. Um, this might be a good time to talk about kind of, you know, we are clearly uh, going to have some blended groups for this. Uh, so expectation is going to be uh, our, you know, West Coast time. You're 
going to be here for West Coast hours. East Coast people, you're going to be here for East Coast hours. Uh, this is extremely similar to how it is in real life. Uh, your different teams in different locations are going to be set on different time schedules. Part of how you're going to navigate through this week is not only managing your time effectively, but managing the time that your group is together effectively, because your group isn't necessarily always going to be together. We are, as instructors, going to hold people to being here during their scheduled class time, but not outside of that. If your group wants to continue working outside of your scheduled class hours, Zoom will be open literally the entire week, 24 hours a day. You can be here as often as you want to be, but you are obligated to be here during your actual class time period. Again, that applies to both East Coast and West Coast. We're doing one, what do we call it? A stand plank since it's, it's in the a middle plank. of the day. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of stand ups and stand downs, we're stand planking. So in the middle of the day, we're going to do one check in with you all to see how you're doing. Instead of doing twice a day, we're just doing one. And we'll talk about those here in a second. Uh, cool. So um, a lot of this we've kind of already talked about. Uh, so I'm not going to do big deep dives in here. Uh, again, with these projects, because you, whenever you're working on a file, are blocking other people from working on a file, you're going to need to commit very, very frequently, more frequently than you ever have before in any previous project on these projects. Um, I've talked about mob programming earlier, but uh, that is a fantastic approach, especially if you your kind of team as a whole is feeling a little bit weaker about React. Um, that's a great way to be able to combine all of your knowledge in one place to be able to effectively do something. You don't necessarily need to assign tasks at the start of the day and then go and do your tasks and split up during the day and then come back together and kind of check in and see where everyone is at. You can keep your group together throughout the entire day if you wish. It's up to you. Uh, but mob programming works really, really well. Highly recommend it. Uh, cool. All of this is stuff that we've talked about before. Does anyone have any questions on anything that we've covered here? Cody. For class times, is it the same thing as uh, previous you know, projects where it's minus an hour or an hour later in the morning's hour? It is not. It is okay, it is going normal. to be the regular scheduled class time. That is to make sure that you all are at least here during that time for your group. Uh, because this is a group project, we want to make sure that you know you're getting that good, valuable group time in. Who? Uh, I will say this is not necessarily a project where you want to be working until like one or two a.m. on. Um, that's probably not going to be the best thing for you or your team. Uh, you can do it, but uh, it's not going to be as effective as you collaborating with your team members during the day when everyone is already scheduled to be here. Uh, Kevin. Do you know if Trello has like a formal project planning tool like task lists, or do you have to use the cards to like set up things like say, create a draft presentation, deliver the presentation. Do you have to do it through the cards? Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to do it in the cards. There are checklists that you can build inside of the individual cards themselves if that's a, a method that you want to use. Um, just make sure that your like most that your actual user stories still have your individual cards so that you're able to move them around. But if you need like subtasks within those user stories, feel free to use those those checklists 100 percent Okay, great. Thanks. Of course. Uh Justin. How do fly.io and Netlify interact with each other? Yeah. So your Netlify application is going to serve up your front end. Uh, that's going to be, you know, how you all deployed your um, your portfolio projects. Uh, that is where your portfolio project is served up from. So if I go and I view any of your portfolios, it's being delivered to me by Netlify. Um, that application being served to your client 
as uh, a you know React app is going to talk to a server that is running on Fly.io's platform. Uh, so your front end running on your client device will speak to another computer somewhere else in the world and send those requests and you'll complete your request response cycle that way. Uh, so it won't happen like locally on one machine. You'll instead have a anyone that visits your site will download your React application and they will be able to speak to your backend through AJAX requests. Again, that request response cycle. Any other questions? Should, Catherine, should, yes. Should, should I work on my project over the weekend, David? Yes, you should. Probably a good idea. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not going to necessarily like hold you to that. Like we're clearly not scheduled over the weekend, but um, this, this is not a bad idea. Catherine, what was your question? Uh, yeah, this has been really helpful, uh, but I noticed it's not in the notion yet. When can we expect the drop? We'll put it in there right now. We do this so that people pay attention to us while we're talking about it rather than just go read off on their own and not hear what we're saying. So um, we'll we'll put it in there as soon as we get done with this lecture. Kiana. I don't think this was mentioned, but do you guys have any examples of, you know, maybe an app that we could make this time? Um, I think uh, I don't have any like clear examples in here, uh, but think very similar to a unit two project. Um, you're just throwing in a couple extra resources on that. Uh, you're technically going to be able to do photo upload if you choose to do that. Um, that is built into the auth template. So if you want photo upload capabilities, you have that at your disposal. Uh, but really beyond that, um, think kind of similar scale as a unit two project. Uh, but now you just have more people working with you on it and your the number of people influences the number of resources that you need to have in this project. Uh, that's probably the best advice I can give. If you wanted to go look at Oh, I don't know. Previous projects as they're presented, what where might a good place to do that be? YouTube. Yeah. Go check those out. Watch some of the previous Unit 3 presentations. Just don't go back too far because Unit 3, like two years ago, was Django Python. So I I mean, I, I think for all of our major YouTube videos, you'll see React. But cool. Oscar? Oscar. Um, I have a question related uh, in regards to like the uh, when it comes to deploying the front and back end, right? So like, well, uh, while we're working on like the dot EMV, right? Are we supposed to throw in like uh, put in there like the back end fly uh, link like um, into the front end, or are we supposed to be working with like for now just work with the local host until like uh, I I don't understand how that works. Um, we have a deployment guide that you'll follow when it comes to time to deploy your project. But when you deploy your front end, you're going to have an ENV in the front end that has the address of the back end deployment. Okay. Okay. So, All right. I just wanted to make, so, sure. I to make sure. Yeah. Realistically, you deploy your back end first and then get the address for it and then take that address and put it in the ENV of your front end when you deploy it. But yeah, that's we have a, a full guide that covers exactly how to do all of that. And you'll get it when the time is right. But don't worry about deploying any of this until middle of next week. Got it. Thanks. Great question. Any other questions? If you have GitHub Very problems, good. don't wait to ask for help. Please, please, please. We'll help you with those. Don't struggle and suffer in silence with GitHub problems for like days. Kendra? Absolutely. Yeah, I noticed that you uploaded a Cloudinary registration and usage usage video earlier today, and I also noticed that that is in our ENV files. Is that something we're going to need to watch? Yes, I did that lecture with the other class this morning, but we didn't have time to do it with West Coast because y'all started your day with the GitHub stuff. 
Um, you should go check that out. Realistically, signing up for Cloudinary and getting a URL for that to put into your app will take about five minutes. So that video is way too long. Um, you just have to sign up on Cloudinary, get the URL, but the Cloudinary URL, literally hit the copy button, put it in your app and your in your ENV file, and you're good to go. It takes about five minutes to get that. But the video walks through it if you need that. You'll have one of those per team. Just like you'll probably have one database per team as well. You'll probably all share your .env file with one another. You'll set that up once and then everyone shares that among your entire team. So you'd probably be well served by creating a Slack channel with your team members. So you're able to share things like that. Uh, Amy. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, reiterate today's, what we have to do is the back end and the front end repos. Yes, so what is going to be due tomorrow uh, at the end of the day, uh, well, close to the end of the day, uh, 3.45, uh, PM on the East Coast, 1245 PM on the West Coast is going to be your Trello board. Uh, that will be due simultaneously to when we start our pitch deck presentations. Uh, so your pitch deck presentation will reference your Trello board and we'll have all the things in that kind of Trello board uh, that you have worked to compile uh, as part of your pitch deck presentation as well. So uh, that is again, 345 p.m. on the East Coast, 12.45 p.m. on the West Coast tomorrow. Word of advice on that. when And you're going to see this if you watch any of the previous pitch deck videos, which I, again, if you do that, remember, and just take this with a grain of salt, we gave them a lot more time in previous cohorts to do that. So those pitch decks are a lot more polished than what we're expecting tomorrow. We just want a basic run through of what you're going to build with your apps. But your ERDs need to be solid. Where's a good place to go look for an example of an ERD that uses a user and a profile model for a React app like we have here using the auth template? Hoot, hoot, hoot. Yes, Hoot, use that, please. If your ERDs are not flawless, we're going to say something tomorrow during your pitch deck presentations because they have to be flawless for you to start with data relationships. So really, really put some time and, and thought into those, right? Wireframes, whatever. They don't need to be super crazy polished. You're going to do those as you go. We just want a basic look at wireframes and stuff like that. But with your ERDs, like you need to spend a serious amount of time talking as a group about what data relationships you have, what data entities you have, and how you're going to integrate all of those things together, right? If you have a multiple, well, all of you have multiple person groups because that's how groups work. Um, but your... Um, uh, you need to talk about those, right? And make sure that everyone's in agreement about what your data entities and relationships look like. And that ERD needs to be on point because we are going to nitpick the crap out of them during pitch decks tomorrow. That As is a guarantee. Hint, you're not, are you going to have Google OAuth anything in these applications? No, no. No, you're not. You're going to, on your users, store their name and a password. And I think maybe an email address potentially. Um, that that should be it. That's all that you have on your user. Uh, there will not be a Google ID. There will not be anything related to OAuth in any part of this project. Make sure you aren't saying that there's any OAuth stuff because there is none. There's always that's one group the, that does that's, it. That is that is the number one failing of people's ERDs in this project. Is they are keeping the existing Google OAuth stuff. Make sure your ERD does not contain any of that. Um, Catherine, you had a question? Well, like I'm kind of wondering, I'm probably not the only one in this boat, but I didn't finish the Hoot front end and I still need to finish the GitHub with the group, but I know we have a lot of stuff due tomorrow now too. So how, like, if I do feel like I still need that practice and review, but I have to keep going, how should I split up my time for like the rest of today and tomorrow? That's a great question. Um, who, all of the content is there. So you can review that if you want this weekend. I don't think I would prioritize that for today and tomorrow. 
Today and tomorrow need to be about working with your group to come up with a project idea and an ERD. Uh, the group GitHub stuff, I mean, realistically, if you have the time to do that after this lesson gets done, that would be fantastic. If you don't, you don't. Um, it's just one of those things that, you know, we wanted to try to get done. I, I mean, we can't help the, the power going out and having issues like that. So it, we got a little flustered earlier when we did that. But, um, you know, if you have problems with stuff like that, you're going to get those plenty of those reps when you start working on your actual projects. What might be a good idea if you didn't get that done is to get in touch with your teammates and say, hey, maybe we spend an hour or two this weekend practicing, like find a time that works for all of you. Uh, and if all of you are willing to hop online on Zoom over the weekend and practice that and just like go through a sample repo and just like exactly what we did in lecture today, I think that would be beneficial for everybody. Is that a requirement? No. Do I think that it would make working on your projects a billion times easier? But if you haven't gotten Hoot done, go through those the lessons and the content at your own pace. All of the examples are there. Um, but realistically, all of the relationships that you need to know are stuff that you learned in unit two. So that's not something that you would need to logically finish before working on an ERD. That just shows you how to send to requests with the token, which realistically we've already done. So. Great question. Um, before we answer more questions, I know that it's a little late on the East Coast, so I want to make sure that people at least know their groups uh, before we uh, wrap up for the day. Ben, do you want to share the worst kept secret in the history of time? I mean, they already know their groups. Yeah. What? I know. Yeah, Dude, I we got our think groups already? Good yeah, point, I, don't know, I don't think that's a surprise for anybody. If you need to leave, you can leave, but please be communicative with your groups. Um, and we're going to all meet, by the way, tomorrow in uh, East Coast Zoom. So when your class time normally starts, show up here, not in West Coast Zoom. West Coast Zoom essentially is done for the next week. Pin? Just a curious question, like, uh, why not Google Ad? Because I said so. You don't want to do. You don't want to do it. It's it's. You don't want to do it. I promise. I've tried to do it before. I've done it before, and it is not something that you want to try to manage, because you're going to have to end up managing session state, and you're going to have to manage a token, and which one are you going to use to authenticate requests? And it's just not something like you're going to end up spending way too much time on that, and not enough time on what you really need to for this project. That's the that's the real answer. But because I, I said so. Okay. Cool. I say Rajanet. Cool. Cool. Happy to stick around and answer any other questions we have. But again, you are all free to go. Um, thank you for staying for a little bit extra today. Uh, we'll uh, endeavor to make sure that continues to not happen, but sometimes it does. Uh, Cool. Great work. I'm, we'll move this over uh, to your project space in the uh, main workspace for you all so that you're able to review these yourselves. Uh, I'm really excited to see what everyone does. These are going to be really fun projects. Group projects always have the best stories around them, always the best triumphs. So uh, look forward to this week and you're going to have a shit ton of fun. Oh, David cursing. That's how you know it's yeah. real. That is how you know it's real. <laughs> Either that or he needs a nap. <laughs> Have fun, y'all. I'm going to go put this recording up.